Let's get him a little dog. Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking a seriously over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything on this, you know, I mean, this is why they make postcards. Or do they make postcards? Back when they made postcards, they made postcards about days like this. And I guess this is the weather forecast for as far as they can see into the future. So, uh, on this, while I wait for my newest horde of vacation tourists to come pouring in to Bugs in a Jar Farm for the weekend, it is a glorious Friday. That would be September 15th, 20. 23 so we all know what Friday means now you guys escaped last week so you got away last week but nope it is Friday so we are going to get back to the regularly scheduled ecological meltdown roundup of death by a million cuts to the planet and we're gonna go over check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls uh, over at mongabay.com for their weekly cavalcade of catastrophe. Now, not exactly sure why Manga Bay has gotten really involved in this uh, farmer fight over in the Netherlands. Uh, which it's just it, it's just too confusing, too long and complicated. That is an entirely different rant on its own. So I'm going to skip over their special report from uh, the Netherlands, basically showing you know what happens if you really do try to. Uh, crack down on environmental problems and suggesting that we make any sort of a tweak to the global industrial agriculture economy. You can see what happens. How well that will be welcomed. That's another rant for another day. Okay. So, why the UN is not climate neutral? Hmm, the UN has long championed the need for urgent climate solutions. It is claimed to be at least 95% climate neutral ever since, every year since 2018, largely through the use of unadulterated Horseshit carbon credits. Yep, yep, yep. So anyway, Manga Bay and some other journalists have been investigating the UN's claims of climate neutrality. Uh, all right. What is the bottom line? Okay, the bottom line here. More than a dozen, more than a dozen of the projects that issued the UN's carbon credits were linked to reports of environmental damage, displacement, or health concerns. Others were deemed worthless, were deemed worthless by a number of leading climate experts. The definition of worthless having zero value, otherwise known as unadulterated horse shit. These carbon credits uh, that the UN and, and all of these other uh, planet eaters and clueless morons are touting are doing nothing to save the planet. It, carbon credits are one of the many bright green lies of the 21st century. 
whenever you hear the words carbon credit, hit your bullshit detected button. Okay, enough of that. Uh, okay, that's how well that we're going to go from UN carbon credit report card. So we're going to look at a report card on a project in the Philippines that was aimed to protect villages from typhoons. All right. So this was back in 2015. The U.S.-based nonprofit Conservation International introduced so-called green-gray infrastructure to enhance the climate resilience of five villages employing a combination of nature-based and engineering solutions. All right. Uh, so, Manga Bay uh, has visited the site and found most of the project components. This is less than eight years into it. Found most of the project components either degraded or completely destroyed, leaving residents with little more protection than they had when Typhoon Yolanda devastated their communities in 2013. Yep, yep, yep. All right, what is going on with the bushmeat trade? This could almost be at an entire rant. Uh, wild meat, otherwise known as bushmeat trade, from Africa into Belgium, a health and conservation risk. Up to four metric tons of bush meat is illegally entering Europe through just the Brussels International Airport alone. Every month, a new study shows. This is one crackdown at one airport. Four tons per month of African bush meat. You know, who is eating this? Uh, the source for much of this bush meat is West and Central Africa uh, with some of the seized meat found to be from threatened or protected species such as tree pangolins and dwarf crocodiles. I want to know who in Belgium is are eating pangolins and dwarf crocodiles. Uh, The study comes more than a decade after the same group of researchers found an estimated five metric tons of bushmeat entering through the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris every week. Uh, anyway... Uh, you know, guys, and we wonder why uh, the Bill Gaty uh, <laughs> theory of the sixth mass extinction is we're, we're, is, is we're simply going to eat every one of our fellow earthlings. Uh, you know, it begs the question, who is eating this stuff? Uh, you do understand that there will certainly on the continent of Africa, there will be no fellow earthling larger than a mouse surviving uh, what, what's coming down the pike. Uh, anyway. All right. The uh, rhino poachers are cheering and celebrating. This is the best news 
for rhino poachers that I have ever read as African parks to send 2,000 rhinos from controversial breeding program to their deaths. I, you know, I've mentioned a couple of times that this, that this rhino breeding place that has 2,000 breeding age rhinos uh, went belly up and so uh, good for this, uh, this group calling itself African Parks purchased the 2,000 rhinos and now wants to rewild them back into the very parks where they were poached from. The biggest challenge African parks will face in finding safe spaces to trans... Okay, they're doing 300 per year, you know, to move 300 rhinos per year over the next seven years uh, as poaching the animals for their horns shows little sign of diminishing. No, it's sounding, it's looking like every signal of going through the roof. We are handing the poachers 300 basically domesticated rhinos to be poached. These things are about as wild as dairy cows. Anyway, might as well send them to the Netherlands to be called. Uh, there's been, I even saw this story some uh, good news from the beavers. I know that uh, Vegematic claims uh, the beaver report, but we have our own beaver report here at Manga Bay today. NASA satellites reveal restoration power of beavers. All right, good news about beavers. A new partnership between NASA and researchers is measuring the impact of beavers reintroduced to landscapes in Idaho. Uh, beavers are one of the world's most powerful ecosystem engineers building new habitats by slowing water flow and reducing flooding while boosting biodiversity. There you go. Uh, good for the beavers, and I'm reading the same story out of, I guess beavers are now returning to creeks where they have not been seen in 160 years in California, and they're being rewilded all over England. People don't realize that beavers are actually Asian invaders. I'm pretty sure beavers came here. I'm guessing that beavers came over here, uh, you know, on that land bridge. So good for the beavers. And certainly the beaver population is doing very well in sight of me from where I'm sitting in this chair. All right. Wow. Did you realize it is a tricky balancing act, a tricky balancing act between electric vehicle scale up and mining battery metals. Are you too hot in the sun? Do you need to go get in the shade? Is that? Do you need to go get in the shade or what? You can go get in the shade. Should be enjoying this beautiful sun. Of course, I'm hiding behind the Joe Pie weed. All right, you will not believe this, guys. But a recent study finds rapidly switching to electric vehicles could could cut emissions, but also 
increase demand for critical battery metals like lithium and nickel. Wow, I've never heard of this before. This is why we need Rhett Butler to be on the ball. And uh, again, I have never thought about this, that mining metals like lithium has major environmental impacts, including deforestation, high water use, and toxic waste. And electrifying heavy-duty vehicles requires substantially more critical metals than other EVs and could account for 62% of critical metal demand in coming decades despite just making up 4 to 11% of vehicles. Wow. Huh. I never knew that before. Did you ever know that electric vehicles and say it ain't so, Joe, electric vehicles are a danger to the planet. I have never considered this. Thank you, Rhett, for letting us know. Okay. Uh, Alright. I've already done the rant on this. This is Manga Bay's spin on new study shows Earth may be past the safe operating space for humanity. Uh, we've already gone over this. Uh, the updated framework now provides clear thresh thresholds for each of the nine planetary boundaries. Uh, these nine boundaries are like guardrails beyond which humanity cannot push without causing great risk to Earth's operating systems and life as we know it. Hmm, six of the nine boundaries have already been breached. Yep, and two of the other three are getting ready to follow. Uh, imagine that. I love it when they ask, what is next for the new global biodiversity fund? When they ask a question, what is next? Uh, I'm assuming what's next is uh, the same thing that we saw with any other global biodiversity fund. It is going to be an absolute waste of money. It is going to bankroll bright green lying. Uh, it is going to result in the failure of every single biodiversity goal on the table, just like every other biodiversity goal ever being suggested has failed. That's a, just a wild guess on answering the question, what's next for the Global Biodiversity Fund? Uh, the fund's success will be measured by its impact on biodiversity conservation. There you go. Say no more. Say no more. Uh, okay. All right. Too complicated. All right. Here's this quote that uh, sums it all up. We don't have much time. Hmm. This is a Q&A with climate scientist Pierre 
Friedlin Mustein. Friedlin Mustein. What does Pierre say about the state of the planet in 2023? It's not going in the right in the right direction yet. Huh. I do not believe that he would think that. Uh, despite that, he is says he is mildly optimistic about the trend in global emissions. Mildly optimistic. Uh, I'm pretty sure that global emissions hit a new world record in 2022, and I see no reason particularly why they're not going to hit a new record in 2023. Uh, the uh, apocalyptic clueless moron says he is also her. Huh, says he is also her. Huh, says. He is he is he is he is he is hoping deforestation will go down hmm in the coming years there you go at least in Brazil but he's not sure that Indonesia another major global carbon sink is ready to go in the right in the right direction. Yes, and I love how he pointed out that the Corona panic uh, showed that climate is still quote not on the top of the list close quote of government prioritize, given that all nations, otherwise known as 100% of nations sought to boost their economic growth after the lockdowns despite the carbon emissions that incurred. Hmm, that he is mildly optimistic about global emissions trends and hoping that deforestation will go down. I think where I was reading something yesterday about putting the forest back. We just need to put the forest back. Uh, huh. So we've got it in a report card on, uh, I've already forgotten, we've already had two report cards today, uh, UN Carbon Credits and that other one. So now we're going to look at a report card on banning whale shark hunting in Indonesia. Ten years ago, Indonesia banned the capture, trade, and exploitation of whale sharks, a protected species, yet scores of records show whale sharks continue to be butchered and sold along the southeastern coast of Java after either beaching or being unintentionally caught by fishermen. Uh, the continuing illegal exploitation shows the need for more awareness. Do you think so? Uh, that's what's going on with whale sharks continuing to be butchered. Well, let's see what we're going to get with it for our $20 million debt for nature swap with Peru. Yep, yep, yep. We will see about that. Okay. We have a question being asked at Manga Bay in a headline. The question of the week is, can agroforestry chocolate. Can agroforestry chocolate 
help save the world's most endangered rainforest? The answer to the question, can agroforestry chocolate help save the world's most endangered rainforest, is no, it cannot. All right. Uh, all right, we have more people wanting to stop fossil fuels. Yes. Uh, more, you will not believe that more needs to be done to limit the global, the global rise in temperatures to one and a half C. <laughs> yeah, more needs to be done, please. Uh, the authors of the report call for phasing out fossil fuels and ramping up renewable energy. Hmm. Uh, and here is Noble savages saving a piece of planet. You go, guys. All right. Uh, moving ahead. All right, we've been following this story. So the latest story from Indonesia is Indonesian regulator gets 12 years jail time for palm oil permit bribery. Yes. Uh, was guilty of taking the equivalent of $1.38 million in bribes from various palm oil companies. Uh, See how many nights he actually spends in jail. I think we had part of this story last week. Uh, I guess this is the second half of this story. Hundreds of oil spill sites threaten Amazon indigenous lands and protected areas. Yes, a new Manga Bay investigation has found that at least 109 spill sites overlap with 15 protected natural areas in Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. More than 1,800 miles of oil pipelines now cross 65 natural reserves and 100 40 indigenous territories. Uh, do you think so? Uh, yes. The struggle to deter mining operations in a little known biodiversity sanctuary in Brazil. This is the unprotected southern portion of the Chapada Diamantina mountain range. It is in the crosshairs of mining operations, remaining vulnerable to land grabbing and deforestation. Yes. The forest houses threatened species, water reservoirs, and endless supplies of scenic beauty. There are more than 34,000 acres of area authorized for mining prospecting in the region. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you know, Cargill not far from here in the big Cargill factory. Agro-giant Cargill tied to deforestation in Bolivian forest. Hmm. 
a new report from Global Witness uncovered a paper trail that ties food giant Cargill to more than 20,000 hectares, otherwise known as 50,000 acres of deforestation in Bolivia's Chiquiltano Forest. The findings also implicate financial institutions that back Cargill. Do you think so? Uh, anyway, guys, hopium, hopium. Uh, they're digging deep into the hopium. What is going on with El Nino and carbon storage? El Nino hurts carbon storage in South America's tropical forest. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, a new study published this month in Nature revealed that during extremely hot and dry conditions, tropical forests in South America stop acting as carbon sinks. Hmm. With fewer birds seen on farms, scientists try listening for them. There you go. Uh, if you can't see them, you're just not listening hard enough. I realize I'm talking to myself. Here is kissing goodbye. The tapirs or tapers in Suriname, despite being listed as vulnerable by the IUCN, tapirs are still hunted in Suriname, the only country in the region where taper hunting is allowed. Uh, well, like, uh, it, it means it's not ha happening elsewhere, you know what I'm saying. Uh, gamekeepers face challenges in enforcing hunting regulations, assuming there were any, due to limited resources and personnel, leading to illegal hunting even outside the designated taper season. Oh, boy. Anyway, guys, I can go on and on with this, but I've already lost my little dog, and I hope the camera is not... frying in the warm, late summer sun. And I gotta wrap this up. I'm in the middle of uh, moving 40 Joe Pie weeds. I'm making a new hedge of Joe Pie weeds along the road while I still can on this spectacularly gorgeous day in the collapse. Would you look at this day? And this is pretty much what this is going to look like for as far as they can see into the future. The sun is so bright, I have got to wear shades. Bye, guys.